My hands are in my pockets. So I've got no, my hands are in my pockets mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> I heard something. Yeah. It was like it was like a it was like this. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a chink. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. A chink. I didn't yeah. feel anything. It, I thought it was behind me. Mm -hmm. And then I thought it was you. Mm -hmm. well, what we can definitely say is that there are lots of unexplained things that are happening around us here. Yes. And they're not due to us being tired. No. So that would be paranormal. Oh, it yes. will be unexplainable. That's mm. I'm scared. <laughs> that don't happen often. I'm just keeping very quiet, which is unusual for me. Oh. So, what? Something just came up. Well, what and all? If that's what it was. So had we caught one of the first stages of a ghost manifestation on camera? Was this odd moving light another encounter with an orb? After close inspection of the tape, we cannot offer any other explanation. So it had been a long and eventful night, and even though Jason's two experiments involving the flower and the coin showed no result, the scratches on Carl and the strange object moving on its own were enough evidence to suggest that the red line in Avebury could very well be haunted. That was one of the best experiences that I've had to date. Purely and simply because of the activity in the different areas of the building, both higher level and lower level, at different times during the investigation. Well, this has certainly been one of the most unusual investigations that I've ever taken part in. There was the orbs that seemed to be linking with different members of the team. Yvette's reactions to the experiences of the evening were, I think, due to mass hysteria. We've had that before, and she gets scared very, very easily. Yvette, yes. Naturally, she was a little bit, to say, at the least petrified over certain incidents that actually did take place. My heart went out um, a lot to Yvette. But what I think is the most memorable part of the evening was when Carl came down from uh, taking off a secured camera and two scratches appeared on his neck. Now. These were fresh scratches, you could see. They were red, they were, they were like open wounds almost. They were pretty horrific to look at and quite scary. And that sort of made me think about the whole thing in a different light because it suddenly becomes some, something not so much as a game and fun, but something that's p perhaps potentially dangerous in some way. And that did concern me. Well, we've come to the end of our 24 hours, and I have to say, Derek was very accurate on quite a lot of things. Jason, our parapsychologist, was <laughs> spooked. And, um, me spending that time alone in that room, I will never, ever forget. I've never been so frightened in all my life. And I think, well, will we ever understand what went on here in Avebury? I, I don't know. Anyway, we shall see you at our next location. Until then, sleep tight. Well, literally, we just stood there working. And then we both kind of looked up, and the thing just, it just shut. Oh, that's exactly like that. <laughs> Okay, a bit of an overreaction, maybe. When did you notice it was doing that? I sighted you and I looked up and I thought, it's moving. So there's no one else in this area? No. Else?